you know where you are you are in blessed Biafra network yes uh, yes that there was a genocide against the biafra people right okay. the the who were trying you know the Igbo people who were trying to form an independent nation of biafra they wanted to be separate from the country that the british empire had imposed on us which was this country of nigeria where they kind of just kind of took a bunch of independent nations who don't have anything to do with each other, don't even speak each other's language, don't relate. Many of them were even enemies and warring at the time, smushed them all together and drew these arbitrary lines around them mm-hmm. and called them countries and named those countries. Right. And then said, now y'all get along and do a country for us and be a, a union for us. And then go through, you know, contentious, bloody independence processes that never really yield any real independence. You're still part of a commonwealth afterwards. True. And you have the eternal meddling in your affairs and the eternal extraction of your resources and the eternal fomenting of divisiveness and infighting mm-hmm. in order to be able to control you. This is what an oppressor does, a colonizer does. Uh, this is, these are, you know, tactics and strategies of dominance. Right. We were subjected to that as a larger unit of Nigeria. And then when the Igbo people said, we want our own thing. Let's, let's go in and do that. Well, it so happened to be that the territory that this new country of Biafra was going to be in included very, very rich oil reserves. Mm. And the British were not going to let go of that. Wow. And the people that they had put in power, you know, the, their puppet Nigerian governments weren't going to do that either because they needed it for the Nigerian project. Right. And Britain needed it for its own interests and uses. So Great Britain got directly involved in this civil war and in the war for independence, and decided that they would do everything to make sure. Nnamdi Kano has not done anything wrong, and we have been able to demonstrate before in our brief, before the Court of Appeal, as we did before the lower court, that Nnamdi Kano never jumped bail. You jump bail when you voluntarily escape from trial and refuse to attend trial. But we all saw that on the 16th of September, 2017, Nnamdi Kanu was with his late father, Eze Kanu, in his ancestral home at Inumwahia, Afarauku, Ibeko, Umwahia, Abia State, when the federal government, using the army through Operation Python, invaded the home and killed in cold blood 28 unarmed Nigerians. Now the Kano managed to escape by providence. No. Are you saying that he should have waited for you to kill him when every evidence pointed to the fact that he was to be eliminated? And when he escaped to Israel, he quickly deposed an affidavit giving circumstances under which he came. So he never jumped bail. This thing must be clear to the public that now the Kano was enjoying his bail from 2015, he never jumped bail for one day until they forced him to flee.